All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja show. And I know say when I don't wait, we don't follow me since and I don't see say we don't finish our top stories. Uh, we will not feel we wanna call in and uh, drop on our contribution. And I just finished uh, with Ezuku Chukudi, uh, the in-house Alejandro, as he call himself today because of the clothes we wear. Uh, we don't already talk look into the newspaper, the headlines we did there, and we take uh, you know dissect all the information too. I, I tell I promise when I say we get uh, a, an amazing lineup of uh, Skype guests with uh, some kind of exceptional individuals. And today, our first guest now, Lamide, uh, a.k.a. Nino's Treasure, an entrepreneur where she be, and a very, very exceptional person because she did de, she de into cane crafts. She did make baskets from cane. Uh, good morning, madam. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank How you for you? having me. Too. How are you doing today? I'm fine, yeah? thank you. It I'm seems, fine, thank you. It, it seems you are, you are not feeling the coronavirus pandemic because you are looking really calm <laughs> and cool. How is that? <laughs> uh, we all, I think we're all feeling it one yeah. way or the other. Yeah. Okay, so so let us even start from uh, what you do. Let's start from there. Yeah? What exactly do you, um, how do you do what you do? Let's, let's So that people will know exactly the thing you do. Okay. Okay, so my name is Olami the last person. I'm the mm. creative director of Nino's Treasure. Okay. Nino's Treasure is an online luxurious crafts company that focuses okay. on producing versatile handcrafted items made out of cane wood as a lifestyle piece for your home. Mm. One of our objectives is actually to shed the spotlight on African craft and mm. ultimately um, boost our cultural creativity and tourism sector of the economy. Okay. And also, of course, provide job opportunities for people within the society. Okay. For me, I'm very passionate about craft. Um, I have another business that does wood craft, and this is another one for cane craft. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think it's high time we debunk the perception that indigenous locally made products cannot compete with international market. True. That's totally false. True. Especially during these times, it's shown that we almost don't have a choice but to patronize local, and yeah. people have had to look inward yeah. and buy their items locally. So it means that we can actually survive with our locally made products. Mm -hmm. And yes, of course, they can compete with the international market. Makes so sense. my business is actually debunking that perception. Hmm. Thank you. Okay, great. Great stuff. So, uh, how long have you been um, doing this cane uh, crafting part of the business? How do, and how did it start <laughs> up for you? Okay, so, I mean, we actually want, we just clocked one year on Children's Day, May 27. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> so, so we yeah. can say happy anniversary, yeah, one wow. year anniversary. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's been a year and it's been an awesome, it's been, it's been a phenomenal journey. And for me, um, it's just opened my eyes to the fact, like I said, I've been in another business, which is the woodcraft. But this is a different perception because mm. it has opened my mind to the fact that it's actually there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunities look in African craft and mm. you know, like it, because it's also sentimental to we as a country we celebrate our heritage our culture and all that enough we don't have enough awareness being being portrayed on that part of the sector mm -hmm. but I feel like there's good opportunity for it and um, I feel like I'm one of good I'll be looking to champion a project that sheds the spotlight on African indigenous craft. Okay, so, so yeah. what were the first few things uh, to consider to start up a business? What, the, what are the first few things to consider? What would you say? Well, what I would say is to start a business, typically from my experience, it's important to um, know, okay, what are the objectives? What are your long-term goals? What are you looking to achieve in the mm -hmm. long run? One, is it a need? Is it solving a problem in the society? Yeah. Um, two, um, three, rather, um, Capital, some businesses are capital intensive. I wouldn't say the King Craft is actually one of the capital intensive businesses. It's actually minimal, um, minimal funds. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, there's some businesses for other, other people that are working, their businesses are capital intensive. So you want to consider that you have the funds. If you don't, you can seek investment from investors. You can apply for grants. Mm -hmm. You can also get loans from the bank if your business is qualified. But it's important that when you're doing this, you need to have your books tidy. So that you don't fall into issues later, later in, in the long run. In the long run. But yeah, yeah. so that's well, that's three. You also want to ensure that you have the right manpower. So people, you need people to actually function. So you need to ensure that you um come up with a motivation, a motivation strategy mm -hmm. to ensure that they're committed and they also buy into the vision of the business. Mm -hmm. Four, for me, I've had to learn this the hard way. It's important that you also have good knowledge of the craft, whatever your craft or business you're venturing into. Mm -hmm. Like we know in this part of the world, people can be a bit funny. They can either hold it around some or kind of blackmail you out yeah. because they sometimes feel inevitable. Yeah. They feel inevitable that without them, you can't actually function. So it's important that you have good knowledge of that craft mm -hmm. or business so that um, you don't, you're don't you not found wanting later. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, those are the Amazing. Things, Amazing. Things I believe there. that people who are watching, they would have been taking notes. Okay, we make sure, we make sure, we make sure. <laughs> but it's really nice you're sharing this uh, um, um, insight with us. Uh, so how did you start Thank your you. own business? Now, so just a few, give us a quick rundown. How did you start your business? 
Um, for me, like I said, it was just more of a passion. I'm very crafty. I like to create things. Um, like I said, um, there's this perception that, okay, women should be in a particular sector of business. And for me, it's one of the things that's motivates me to keep going. You want to debunk that perception that people have. Mm. Women should be doing feminine stereotypes. Yes, there's some stereotype that come with women doing some particular um, business. True. So it's for me, I'm, I'm very big on wanting to debunk that perception. And it's just the excitement of creating something different from the usual. People find it fascinating. And people find our products, because of the way the products kind of look, the outlook of our products, mm -hmm. um, people find it, um, people struggle to understand that it's actually made local. So it's important to also, it's also a way, I'm also trying to pave way for other people that are into indigenous locally made products to mm -hmm. know that, to motivate them and let them know that. I mean, for now, you just might feel like you're struggling, but in the long run, people start appreciating what you do and they start looking local. And even the government has well, started appreciating businesses that actually are made from indigenous stuff and locally made stuff because they know that it affects the sector positively and it also boosts our gross domestic mm -hmm. um, product as a, as a country or as a whole. So, yeah. yeah, that's just the fascinating, that's the exciting factor for me. I mean, sure that I'm, obviously I like to produce and manufacture things. I'm yeah. a manufacturer for the last five years, I've been in the manufacturing sector. So, okay. I think I've been able to segment and understand the sector very much. Yeah. And yeah, it's just a good way for other people to also do the same. And as speaking about uh, being in the manufacturing sector, there will definitely be lots of challenges you get to face, you know, probably. So we would, would like you to just highlight a few challenges that uh, you encountered and you were able to overcome. Like, you know, let's, let's know. We, 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 okay, we, um, for, the, for the manufacturing, um, like I said, some people are on the large scale, so we are more of the minimal scale. And mm -hmm. ours is more of handcraft, like we know. So we don't really do a lot of machines and equipment and the likes of it. Okay. Basically, for us to produce an item, what we need is just scissors, literally knife scissors, and actually the raw materials itself. So mm -hmm. challenges would be things like sourcing raw materials. Obviously, we have uh, we have that challenge of it's not even enough typically mm -hmm. because we don't we don't import them into the country. We have to deal with the raw materials that actually um, produced produced locally. Here, yeah. So sometimes you might not yeah you might have scarcity of raw materials. Um, like I said, manpower. People are not people are not people in this part of the world. People just they just work for the sake of work and earning money. They are not they don't buy into the vision and mission of what you're trying to do. Mm. So it's a struggle to communicate that to them because I particularly work with artisans, so it's very hard for you to kind of communicate that to them so that they buy into what you're doing yeah. but, but we're getting there over time we're getting there it's just for you to kind of communicate on the level that they understand and just let them buy into what you're trying to do as a business mm. typically um so um, what other challenge not financial because like i said my business is not capital it's intensive. Not it can actually yeah. run on its own based on the revenue that is generated but yeah so those are the challenges that i have faced. So, on, but during this pandemic if i'm going to specifically talk about the pandemic I won't say it, had, it has had an adverse positive effect on the business. Like I said, people have had to now look inward and look locally because we're struggling with importation into the country. So it has had a positive effect on our business and people have had to patronize because they almost don't have a choice. Not like we're not running the business on a profit base, but now it's almost like they are forced to um, buy local, basically. And then a lot of people are more online now because almost obviously there's no more to do and obviously it's for you to just create more awareness of your business online so that it's in the face of a lot of people and then um yeah um patronage would definitely come all right so um looking at um this uh whole idea and uh this it's, it's it takes a lot to start up a business in the first place you know and being in an industry or being an industry that is not as um um, um, popular, you know, as the regular people would expect. You go if you are doing arts, it's either this one or that one. So how has it? Mm -hmm. How have you been able to 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 maintain and thrive in that part? Seeing the fact of uh, acceptability, uh, you know, people being involved. How have you been able to, you know, to um, maintain a float in that part? And have yeah, you um, yeah, it's good that you. It's good that you mentioned that because, like you said, like you just rightly said, a lot of awareness is not put on this part of the business. Mm -hmm. So we have the creativity, the tourism, and um, other sectors that there's a lot of focus on, and this part is kind of almost like neglected or left out. But I'm happy that there's an association that has been formed for this part, and luckily for us, we were able to fill some forms that had to do with um, putting some of the challenges that we're facing as a business for the um, creativity and tourism sector of, mm -hmm. of the economy. So I'm hoping that that would kind of spring up a lot of, um, or shed the spotlight on this part of our business based sure. on the forms that we feel that for the pandemic, um, for the pandemic that mm -hmm. they're trying to regulate and things like that. So that would spring up more part, that part of business. And then 
what we what we've done as a business, we've, part, we've kind of worked with some company with some organizations like NGOs as well, so that obviously that would create awareness. So it's not for profit; it's just for us doing it and just let people know what we are doing as a business. Com um, associations like Nasima that helps to regulate um um imports into the country and obviously shed lights on on um shed a lot of lights on locally made products as well. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's just for you to kind of partner with um, all those kind of organizations so that they shed more spotlight on the business. And we hope that at some point in the nearest future people are a lot more aware of crafts of the craft business. Mm. And obviously there are a lot of online um platforms where we are we have we have an association where we gather and just kind of talk about yeah our businesses yeah. as a whole and some of the challenges that we face. And then I hope that in the nearest future there's a lot more uh, information <laughs> on this on African craft as a whole. Yeah, and now speaking about the pandemic, we know that it uh, it hit the world unexpectedly. It affected a lot of industries. People uh, yeah. who couldn't evolve in the industry probably had issues, you know, probably laying off people, shutting down. So you as, as, a, as this uh, individual in this industry, um, how have you been able to get your clients and maintain your clients during this pandemic? Because we know that there's a lot of uh, guidelines on how people, you know, um, meet and things like that. So how have you been able to, to get new clients and have you been able to maintain them in, a, in this pandemic? Okay, um, like I mentioned earlier, we operate an online-based system. So mm -hmm. for us to attract new clients, for us to, because obviously people are a bit skeptical about buying things or ordering things from people because of everything that's going on. Yes. So it's just for us to communicate some of the guidelines and procedures that we're putting in place to ensure that there's, we are, we are, we are um, taking into caution the safety measures to be um, mm -hmm. adhered to in producing their items. What I've done personally, I've had to do a video of me producing one of our products. And just to ensure that I'm, I'm doing the right things, wearing my gloves, ensure that my hair is covered and things like that, so that they feel more comfortable coming to you and ordering your uh, ordering products from you. And even as far as even our delivery process, to ensure that it's all sealed airtight so that um, there's no um, like a contactless um, delivery. And even if they come in contact with you, we also ensure and we kind of communicate over time and let them know that when you receive your parcel, please leave for a couple of hours or wipe down before you strip open and then access the product that you've ordered. Mm. So that's how we've been able to make our customers comfortable. And, and I feel like those measures were also, they also helped us to attract new clients as well, because mm. people want to know that they are safe with the product that they're getting from you. And to retain our current customers, what we've done, we've had to come up with a loyalty scheme that obviously kind of like um, accumulates points for them. If you've ordered from us before, now you can do like a referral based system where you can use the points that you've had over time. And then just kind of ensure that you, you, you retain the customers that you have with you and just kind of um just kind of cuddle up make sure that they're cuddled up cuddled up into the business basically mm -hmm. that's what i've done makes sense makes sense now uh looking at uh, the kind of crafts you do like uh, they're very they're quite exceptional and uh i, I believe every mm -hmm. idea or creative idea do, do you are you always in charge of that or do you have like people who be like oh yeah we can do this we can do that how does it work for you <laughs> are you always in charge of okay this is okay. the kind of thing i want to create this is the kind of stuff you would look good. How is uh, how is that on your side? <laughs> so for me, like I, I operate the creative part of the business. I'm the creative okay. director. However, we have staff. We have a team of people that we work together. So basically, okay. I come up with the designs. Okay. And for me, like I don't just want the regular. We do like bespoke designs. But obviously, customers can give us their design and say, "Can you produce this?" And we produce it for them. Mm -hmm. And obviously, add them to our collection. So basically, I come up with the designs. For me, like I said, I want our, our the indigenous African class to compete with the I want to the debunk the perception that can't copy the international yeah. market. So I want it to, yes, I want them to compete with, with the international market. And for me, so precision, um, did a lot of details are put into production mm. for me. Not this won't be the regular thing that you see, because what we've gotten over time is that people say our customer and be like and ask us that this made in Nigeria. We're like, yeah, mm -hmm. those kind of things give me joy. It means that people are appreciating precision, they are appreciating high quality products, and they're appreciating finished, amazing finishing. So yeah. for me, that's what keeps me going as a business. Yeah. So yes. I come up with the designs most times, and we also do this for orders that clients give us. Okay, now you were saying something about um, since this is a business that is online majorly. Uh, you know, in in Nigeria, it's been a situation where people still don't trust online businesses, seeing the fact that okay, what you ordered for yeah. might not be what will be delivered to you. It has always been a case yes. of, ah, I saw this picture and <laughs> what they brought for me was something else. I don't know how that happened, but, you know, so the trust is still not uh, strong enough when it comes to 
online payments, pay before delivery, things like that, you know. Yeah. So what would you say would be like uh, ways that we can actually, um, you know, bridge that gap between the customer and uh, the business owner <laughs> who his business is online and he needs people to actually fund the business online? What would you say? How can we bridge that gap? Hmm. For me, I feel like the entrepreneur, the business owner has more work to do because of it, you need to earn the trust of people. And if your service is a service like ours that is paid before delivery, you have more work to do behind the scenes. Exactly. For me, what has helped me over time is I do a lot of, yeah, for me, I do a lot of videos just to show you the behind the scenes, just to show you production, but so that you're also letting them feel like they're a part of your business. They're, they're buying genius and seeing what you're doing. And when you deliver, you're doing videos of delivery, it's the, oh, this has gone out for delivery. Sometimes what I've had to do when I started my business initially, when we were trying to build our finance base is that I've had to hand deliver myself. Yes. Okay. So every customer that I ordered, maybe like first three months of business, I've had to take it to their houses to deliver to them. So mm -hmm. they are buying into the journey and I see that there's somebody behind it. And obviously, you know, when people feel that there's a personal touch. There's yeah, there's a a, like a connection. The they trust and better. The brand. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that, and those are the things that you kind of have to put online. You can't, sh you can't be a business owner and be shy and be saying, oh, this, I can't put this. I know you have to put everything face. because uh -huh. you're yeah. relying on them for your business to run. Yeah, exactly. So I put a lot of information out there. I put my behind the scenes. I put my work in progress, I put my delivery, I put everything. So it's also almost hard for you not to trust that kind of business because mm. everything, even people that buy from you, you are tagging them so they see that they're not false people, if that makes sense. You're mm. tagging them, they're commenting and telling yeah. them they like the products, you're taking polls on Instagram. So these are the things that you can, like I said, a lot of work has to be done on the entrepreneur on side. On the entrepreneur just part. To get people to buy into it. Yeah, just mm. to get people to buy into the genuineness of your business. And what we also do is, I mean, you can't ignore the fact that sometimes there might be issues. So we have like a 100% refund policy as well. So oh. if you're not happy with the product that you receive, yeah, so we can also offer 100. But we've not had that happen. However, I'm saying that that's one of the measures that we put in that's place possible, just yeah, in case there are issues. I, yeah, yeah, I personally run quality control when our um, items are um, finished. I do my QC myself and ensure that everything is perfect before I take it out for delivery or we'll send it out for delivery. All right. So uh, before you leave us, uh, I'd just like to ask this. So and as, as it is, uh, what do you think the government can do to uh, assist uh, businesses like you know mid mid scale businesses that are not, that are just growing up or the ones of small scale businesses? What would you uh, suggest to the government uh, regarding this? How can they come in? How can they help? Well, I feel like um, they should just. Um, maybe most people always say they need funds, so maybe mm. um, let loans or funds be more accessible to SMEs, mm -hmm. and obviously ensure that the process is not as rigorous. Yes, it's, it's important for them to do their due diligence, but obviously ensure that it's not as rigorous and frustrating. Yeah. Some sometimes we hear that there's some documents that they're asking for. It's almost like, how do you even get that as a small business? It's, it's a bit, it's difficult. Mm. Just so if they can make the process quite seamless and easy, it might help small businesses, and also like share more awareness, help people create more awareness, and have like. Um, bodies that regulate some of the guidelines of this of some sectors of the business, basically. Mm. Um, so those are the few things I think that the government can do to assist small businesses. Most people are always big on capital, anyways. Yeah, it's like always a financial things. situation. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there are other things too, because awareness will definitely generate funds. If people are yes. aware of what local businesses are doing, the spotlight is being shed on local businesses. Because a lot of people are saying, oh, I didn't know that we had this in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. True. So, that's, True. so you tell that there's a gap there. There's a gap. So you can tell that there's a gap there. Mm -hmm. So if the government can help us have regulatory bodies that shed specific light on local businesses or um, indigenous craft or indigenous businesses, mm -hmm. that would actually help a lot. And it also, it also is the burden on them having to give us loans or yeah. give capital to businesses. Because yeah, then your business can actually fund itself. And mm -hmm. it's self-serving. It's self mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much, Elamide, for these tips that you've given uh -huh. because we believe that every uh, a, a small business owner or mid-scale business owner out there would probably look through all these things you, you said much. and see how they're functioning and uh, things that they need to put in place yeah. after this conversation. It would be thank very, you. very, very enlightening thank and you. very, very And you can follow us on Instagram, please, you know? at Nino's Treasure. Okay, okay. At definitely. Nino's Treasure on Instagram. D definitely. All right, so uh, I was just talking. Thank you very much for talking to us, uh, Elamide. It's been a 
it's been a pleasure. Oh, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank uh, you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. So we just uh, have finished the conversation with Alameda, a.k.a. Nino's Treasure. She's an entrepreneur. And uh, they're into the craft uh, of cane making. And that was quite an insightful conversation, seeing that small businesses like that uh, can now actually thrive in this period of a pandemic. So we just decided to bring that out so that we can urge other people out there who have small business owners and say, ah, I don't know what to do. How do I evolve? Uh, the pandemic has caused problems. No, there's always a way out just to put some certain things in place. And she gave us a lot of tips that we can also use to uh, improve your business in these uh, times that we live in. Okay.